you know. But that's not the point of this show, um, to talk about Carbon-14. The point of this show is to discuss the following. Although this will hurt this show talking about this, because no matter how strong the evidence I give, so many people will just not be able to handle the idea that the strata layers are, are not what they think they are, and that the Earth might not be so old, and and so forth. So many people just can't handle that. They just associate it with crazy, whacked out um, evangelical ministers on TV, and they just can't get past the mental block, and they want to associate with their geology professors in college who they looked up to and thought were so trendy and smart. <laughs> um, so no matter how much evidence is presented, and even if you can see it with your own eyes, like erosion rates and so forth, people will still not follow. But the point is, is the evidence shows that two things. One, the Earth isn't old. And two, the strata layer, due to the fact that the Earth isn't old, and due to the fact that we have real-time creation of strata layers that exactly mimic on uh, what we see in the sides of hills, which pe which professionals have been saying is million are millions and millions of years old, we have to follow the empirical roots and ascertain that all these strata layers we have worldwide are not old and they're the product of settling out a natural settling out process where the small stuff goes to the bottom and the big stuff goes to the top, and so forth. There, so so therefore, there is simply no account of increasing complexity through the eons recorded in the strata where the teeny organisms are at the bottom and the big complex ones are at the top. You can forget that theory for empirical reasons. No empirical evidence, nobody's ever seen it happen. The empirical process doesn't exist as far as um, anybody has seen. And what we have seen is it happened in real time in a very different process than the professionals theor or initially theorized about. So therefore we have to ascertain that the strata layers have nothing to do with the progression of complexity of evolution through time to actually verify a young Earth. So if this is true, we'll come back full circle now to chromosome 2, which is what this show is all about. It's taken us this long to get here. Here's um, a, the way that there's a paper uh, from the Ankerberg Theological Research Institute uh, creation debate, Mount St. Helens Part 1, Dr. John Ankerberg with Dr. Steve Austin. Uh, it's Ankerberg, A-N-K-E-R-B-E-R-G dot com slash articles slash underscore PDF articles slash science slash SC 1W0903.pdf and Here's the bottom of page two of this article. I may put this on antimatter radio. Sedimentation is going on rapidly around Mount St. Helens. See, they've been observing this for the last 20 years. Uh, sorry, tw uh, 30 years going on. And, you know, they watched this formation where these, you know, we've got these petrified forests around the world. The, the experts say they're millions of years old. And the, the same process, whether anybody likes it or not, you know, you can get all the experts att to attack and say, "Oh, the crazy creationists." Whether they like it or not, the exact same process is happening. Spirit like Mount Saint Helens. But anyways, sedimentation is go sedimentation is going on rapidly around Mount Saint Helens, and the logs are having their root ends buried in different levels at the bottom of the lake. Right before our eyes, logs are becoming buried at different levels and have the appearance of being multiple forests. If we had cut through the rock strata layers of the earth, observing the strata and the upright petrified logs, we might assume that each layer represents a forest with thousands of years of soil development uh, than, a few f than a mature forest. That forest was later buried and the second forest grew on, on the next level over hundreds or even thousands of years. L levels of the earth with upright petrified logs might be suggested that require many thousands of years, maybe even millions of years of the earth history. Yet, at Mount St. Helens, this thing seems to be going on very rapidly in the last 10 years. So it's very, very interesting, this whole process. Now, let's focus on what some of the critics, obviously the critics of this are tremendous. Uh, let's go to the main site here, noanswersingenesis.org. 
au slash Mount St. Helens debate or diacil. Uh, and this is um, run by Kevin Henke, PhD. And he's got that on the top of his site. Creationism is not an alternative to evolution. Ignorance is. You know, that's that's nice. Uh, that's at no no answers in Genesis org dot a a u slash index dot htm the homepage. That's that's great. Maybe that's true. But why can't somebody just counter all these claims that we're making? You know, instead of putting that there. Let, so let's go. They specifically address Steve Austin's work at Mount St. Helens that we're discussing here on a page called Young Earth Creationist Dating of Mount St. Helens Diocite The Failure of Steve Austin, Austin and Swenson to Recognize Obviously Ancient Minerals Now notice because Steve Austin dated the um, he did the dating methods at Mount St. Helens to see what it would if it would say it's you know 30 years old or, or a billion or whatever and basically what happened is he came up with all different contradicting numbers um so many, you know, the old numbers that were all different all over the place. So, but the interesting thing is the real issue is that petrified forests and layers of strata and so forth formed where the, the complex or the bigger organisms went to the top and the little teeny stuff to the bottom and the strata layers. That's the big thing. And they don't address this in this, uh, that, that's the bigger issue. And they just completely ignore it. And only address the dating, saying he didn't do the dating properly. Now, if you noticed, I don't even care about that. So this is a total uh, uh, red herring. It doesn't have anything to do with uh, anything that's relevant. It's a wild goose chase down the wrong road. The point is, is that the strata layers formed, as I just said. Not whether or not, who cares if he did the dating professionally or unprofessionally or, or whatever. He says he did, they said he didn't. Who cares? Okay, the point is the strata formed. And there's evidence for young earth everywhere. So that's the more empirical account. We have to go with that account. The only thing that the experts have going for them is these contradictory date, old earth dating methods. Okay, now let's go to another criticism. This is a really good article right here. Talkorigins.org slash FAQs slash MTS t helens dot html excellent whole beds creationism and mount st helens now it starts off this way i failed to realize how much the facts concerning the volcanic eruption at mount st helens have been abused and misused by creationists until i read this series of articles on june 15 1996 at and he lists a uh, a certain website which i guess now doesn't exist anymore so he starts off discussing uh saying that steve Austin has claimed that geologists say it takes thousands of years to coal, for coal to, for form, to form. And, oh, that's not true. Okay, so that who that's not really getting to the point. If he did or did not make a mistake on that, and if it's not true that all the ge, you know that geologists in general hold that position, which I thought they did, uh, who cares? The point is, is coal is forming now extremely fast the Mount St. Helens site. And that's really how the rest of the article goes, just talking about the coal formation. Now let's go to another site here, Institute for Creation Research. And this is the, oh, this is one of the ones that the experts really say, this is just, you know, horrible, horrible. <laughs> you know, and while they failed, I mean, all they can really point out, argue with Austin about is his, his techniques of dating, which is what we're seeing. And little nitpicky details about oh did Steve Austin cite the 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 uh, did he misquote the experts or something? Not addressing that these strata form. Okay, here here's here's a site Institute Institute for Creation Research Mount St Helens and Catastrophism by Steve Austin Ph.D. And this one I will put on. Let's see, I'll put it on the Antimatter Radio site under. Well, it'll just be on the, the main site there somewhere. I'm not sure where I'll put it. Mount St. Helens and Catastrophism, I'll call it. The second paragraph here, sorry, sec first section, third paragraph, Rapidly Formed Stratification is the title. Up to 400 inches of strata have formed since 1980 at Mount St. Helens. These deposits accumulated from primary air blast, landslide, waves on the lake, pyroclastic flows, uh, mud flows, airfall, and stream water. 
Perhaps the most surprising accumulations are the pyroclastic flow deposits amassed from ground-hugging, fluidized, turbulent slurries of fine volcanic debris which moved at high velocities off the flank of the volcano as the eruption plume of debris over the volcano collapsed. These deposits include fine pumice ash, uh, laminae and beds from one millimeter thick to great, greater than one, mi one meter thick, each representing just a few seconds to several minutes of accumulation. A deposit in less than one day on June 12, 1980 is 25 feet thick and contains many, uh, many thin laminae and beds. Conventionally, sedimentary here.